Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today with me I have Sherwin Matthews from Steamforge Games, and we're going to be talking about the Dark Souls core sets, or the new Dark Souls core sets. Sherwin, how are you doing today? I'm not too bad. It's a little bit cold here, uh, which perhaps fits, you know, the painted world, but we'll see where we get to. Yeah, over here we finally started hitting chilly season, and because it's Cleveland and the weather is, likes to be a little crazy, we're expecting uh, 75 degrees in, like, you know, a few days, so it's just ricocheting back and forth. <laughs> uh, but in any case, so so Dark Souls, so so let's go ahead and jump into this to a degree. This is basically a, a conversation around the Dark Souls core sets, right. which are interesting both in their own rights, because, well, Dark Souls is a very large IP, it's been turned into a very large board game, uh, been around for a long time and suddenly had two new core sets so lots of interesting questions off the bat and then more interesting because as well not more interesting additionally interesting because we have the upcoming Elden Ring and so there's a whole bunch of conversations primarily around Dark Souls some small questions about Elden Ring different things like that that we'll be diving into throughout this uh, timestamp still low as usual to any relevant sections for those who want to jump around to whatever question speaks to you the most but Sherwin I think the uh, first question I have off the bat, and and by the way, this is a conversation, so to in all cases on my end and your end, wherever we want to take this, uh, wherever it goes, but but starting off the bat for me, it's been five years since Dark Souls came out, mm. and Elden Ring is coming out very very shortly. Why why now? Why now are we having two new core sets for Dark Souls? What what prompted this the, this decision? So this is something where we've actually been working on this for quite some time. So it's it's not necessarily something where there was a strategic marketing decision of, okay, so Elden Ring is happening in November, and now we're going to be looking at um, doing Dark Souls a similar sort of time. It's just one of those things where that's where it particularly landed, is the honest answer to that question. I don't think there was any uh, real strategic decision around the pair of the uh, you know, Elden Ring and Dark Souls at the same time. That wasn't really something that fed off each other. Okay. Uh, we've actually been we've actually been working on Dark Souls, uh, Painted World, and Tomb of Giants for well, I think we first announced them in 2016. Okay. So this is That's possibly the world's lo it's possibly the world's longest lead-in to any game I think we've ever had ever. Um, but for whatever reason, obviously we've had um, you know these are games which we well expansions as they were then we announced back then, and for a number of different reasons there were. Yeah, we didn't necessarily get around to sort of uh, have them in our release schedule for a long time. And when it came to revisiting them, that's when we made the decision, which is probably a nice segue into your probably one of your next questions of, let's look at this as a new release. Do we want to revise the rules? Is this an opportunity to create a new core set? So there's a whole lot of questions I'm going to tie into there, but that's interesting right. off the bat because I didn't, do, I didn't even know it's been announced for a while. To me, part of the thing that's interesting is like under, releasing more stuff for an existing IP always makes sense, but because of Elden Ring existing, it almost feels like well, that's the next you know transitory step or whatnot. Although we will touch upon any design aspects of those two as well. But but starting off the bat with there, so in terms of core sets, why like and and maybe and this might go to some of my ignorance of the Dark Souls universe that you've created, the Steam Forge Dark Souls universe. Mm -hmm. uh, I've played both these sets over here, but I have not played any of the original content. But the original content just has a single core set and then a ton of expansions, correct? Correct. Why specifically two core sets now? Why like why two? Why not three? Why not one? I would I would almost assume one and then expansions. Why two separate core sets with a lot of overlap in well everything and then like what's the, the the reason for that? I think part of the drive for so originally these both of these were vision our vision for them was expansions. So mm -hmm. they were very much similar to Dark Root Basin and also you have um Old Iron Keep and a couple of the others. Okay. You know, we looked at them that way. And it's something where as time went on and we started thinking about what these could look like, plus also the amount of time that's elapsed since the original Dark Souls release uh, versus now, we really started to think, well, actually, maybe we should start thinking about these as new core sets, so standalones, because they make it much more accessible to a new audience, as well as obviously the opportunity for existing fans to pick them up, but actually have a qualitatively new experience, i.e. the campaign, uh, revised rule set, new models, and so forth. Gotcha. And how how do these how do they integrate in terms of if you're trying to go from one to the next? Is there any way to treat these as expansions? Like, I so then they are effectively standalones, much like our original Dark Souls sort of sets. Mm -hmm. Every one of those is you know you have mega boss expansions which simply add in a, a new boss to your games. Uh, okay. You have other areas you can explore or whatever else, but they are ultimately all standalone experiences. These are very much similar in that sense. There's not an overarching campaign you could play between box to box to box. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and as far as the why these two aspects of the Dark Souls universe, any particular reason why Painted World and Tomb of Giants got picked? Uh, I mean, again, these were two that we were already working on anyway. For a while. Um, but I think, yeah, exactly it. But I think also 
these are two very, very characterful, very iconic locations in the Dark Souls universe. They lend themselves really, really well to the sort of campaign style gameplay experiences that they are now. Um, mm. Especially, you know, if you're looking at the painted world, that sort of sense of journeying across this this land, this sort of forsaken landscape to get from one side to the other to defeat the boss and so on. It's is a really nice campaign vibe to what these are, which I think these particular locations both lend themselves to really, really well. Gotcha, gotcha. And then something you mentioned already, which is that fed off of the you know next question or whatnot is in terms of changes so i've played i've played through both of these over here but in terms of the changes from the original dark souls is i have no knowledge whatsoever as far as what changes have been made i'm aware of some general high level feedbacks aspects of the dark souls journeys of the dark souls experience uh, i know that they've both been incredibly sick the whole the whole thing has both been incredibly well received in many a aspects while also getting yeah. some critique about like you know elements of of grind or things like that in different areas but i don't necessarily know well i would say from your stance from steamforge game stance what what areas of critical feedback were given around the Dark Souls universe and which of those did you attempt to address and how? Which is a large question, but because like huge. some of those, it's a huge, huge question because some of these might be like, hey, there's like three areas, but you know what? This one is just too integral, so we just couldn't address it. And this one might be like, I don't know, like however you want to tackle. There's a lot of stuff to go into there. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think in my head at the same time as you're speaking, I'm, my head is racing of how's the best way starting point for this. So so forgive me if this uh, if this sounds slightly meandering, uh, as as is a long a long well, answer to I, a long question. I expect this to be like the larger conversation here, but like a bunch of uh, <laughs> other stuff to go into. But yeah. So I think uh, the starting point we have to have is when we first set out to look at these rules, not necessarily as expansions, but we made a, a very much a concise switch to well, these actually are core sets. They're a new experience. It's a standalone thing. Uh, and we are going to use the opportunity to revise the core rule set. We had one very, very simple starting point rule, which was we didn't want to invalidate anybody's purchases. We didn't want somebody who's already bought a whole bunch of different Dark Souls content to simply have to throw away a whole bunch of their models or their cards or their tiles or anything else, um, because we wanted it all to still be valid or to still be relevant for them. Gotcha. And with that in mind, that obviously set some certain limits to what we could and couldn't do in terms of feedback and revising what our rule set would be. Gotcha. Just to clarify yeah, sure. that, so does that mean more you're focusing on things that could be rules changes that don't necessarily need new components? Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, exactly it. So, okay. for example, the, the main focus, if you were to open up the rule book for either of these two core yep. sets and, and actually look through it and go through, with the exception of the campaign, which is very much obviously focused around how these two particular expansion, or sorry, these particular core sets actually play through, the all of the rules are completely designed to be backwards compatible. So if okay. you go back to your core game, you can use the rulebook from this to then thus determine what your different rules are for how you interact your turns. How sorry, how you you know um, how you go through your turns, Makes how sense. you interact with different terrain, how you do X Y Z, and it's part of what that is. And that was very very important for us. To my knowledge, there's only one card I think which we've invalidated. And you know, feel free. I imagine the beauty of uh, videos is that someone will find one, of course, but so far what i found is is literally a single card which is the wolf ring which we've since obviously uh we've replaced in dark souls tomb and giants anyway so there's a new version of the rule wolf ring in that in that box but all of your existing content you have you can still play using these new rules and that should be something where and this kind of leads us into the second part we really reached into the community dark souls is dark souls is blessed with this incredibly uh passionate and incredibly focused and direct um audience and What's really, really good about you know that in our board game community, especially, is that they they've not been uh, they've been very proactive in terms of building their own homebrew rules, in terms of building their own yes. uh, adaptations to this. And that you know all games have that to a certain extent, but what every single one of those members of the community have gone to the time and effort of doing that are doing is creating more of a you know more callbacks to their favorite game series. They're creating something where they can look at this this product and go, actually, I really like this this particular aspect that I want to drill into of my Dark Souls core experience, and I would like that to be better reflected in the board game and so on. Because obviously, when when you're making any board game adaptation of literally any license, there are always some difficult decisions you have to leave, some things that have to go on the cutting room floor because you can't simply simulation everything because otherwise you inevitably end up with a with something that doesn't always quite match. Same way that video games have certain rules that they can follow, board games have something else and in terms of complexity and in terms of player interactions and all sorts of things like that. So one of the things we wanted to do is reach into that community and you know, really interact with a few key members in there and ask them, what are your homebrew rules? How do you play this game? How do you interact with it? 
And that's where something like the campaign really came out of, because one of the straightaway, one of the first things we had to come back is we love playing this as a campaign. That's one of the most evocative ways you can play Dark Souls and think about Dark Souls. So we want this to be something where more than a standalone session where I sit down with my friends, play for a few hours, and then we beat a boss and then we're done is we want these we want these experiences to be tied together we want these to be things okay. where actually over the course of several sessions of us sitting down over the course of you know a month two months three months whatever our gaming sessions will all unite together into a campaign that feels much more cohesive much more focused and much more evocative of what you know our game experience of traversing the painted world or the tomb of giants would be Okay, and so to address, I guess, to get to the part, uh, to the, that gives you yeah, a nice stage for the overall framework, but so, so therefore, so what aspects did you change or did you address? That, that's quite a lot. I mean, I can, uh, I can start listing them off to you if you want. I mean, or well, the highlights, doesn't have to be necessarily everything. Yeah, highlight, I mean, okay, highlight, this is so honestly a curiosity on my end, because like, I know my experience in the going through these journeys, um, but I don't know what changes were made to get us here. Like, so I'm curious what so, would have been something I experienced differently. So, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So moving aside from the campaign, which is obviously quite a bit different, and then, yeah, we can spend a bit of time talking about that if you're interested in how it would work before, but it was this is a much more involved campaign in terms of the way that your encounter system works and building that and adding shortcuts and events and so on. Yep. That's something where there was nowhere near that level of depth before. Um, but if we're looking at the, at the core rule changes, as in what will then obviously go backwards into the older sets, uh, the most obvious one is the defense rolls. So okay. this is something where previously there was a decision point where when you got attacked, you went, okay, I'm either going to try to dodge this or I'm going to try and block this. There wasn't okay. ever a combined role as you have now. Okay. So that's a really good example. There was, there were, and in our community, there were quite a few. Oh, interesting. Back and forth. So you're saying you rolled either for defense or for dodge. And yeah. now, right now you do both and you can either potentially dodge or mitigate the damage entirely. You've got it. Gotcha. Now, there's, there's, there's quite a bit. Of back and forth in our community about that as i'm sure you can imagine uh, okay. mostly because people said well i'm still wearing the armor if i choose to dodge and fail i still am wearing the armor why don't i get the benefit of doing it for example and there by nature of how games will work everyone immediately started thinking well is one better than the other an endless conversation circle around about how you build and what your focus is towards there and obviously being that you know you're ultimately looking at finding gear which is from a random pull from a deck there are certain ways where it's not easy to optimize uh, so this is one of the things where, when looking at this, we knew that there were people who felt one was stronger than the other or felt that, you know, you should just simply ignore dodge and always go for block or whatever else, that sort of stuff. Well, why not combine the pair? It's more thematically appropriate. And also it's more forgiving to the players in the sense that if you don't get the right drops, then one play style wasn't available to you in the old system. So let's combine the pair. And, and it still forces way. you to evaluate your build structure. Like I know as I was going through Painted Rule, I definitely prioritize. I personally prefer Dodge. I like Dodge a lot. But I personally right. preferful building towards a Dodge system, but you do meaning it's still it doesn't take away from the decision around how you build your character, but it does take away from the moment to moment decision while being more forgiving for the players. Interesting. And yeah. you mentioned shortcuts. Shortcuts were not in the original Dark World? Dark Souls? <laughs> uh no, so shortcuts were definitely not in the original Dark Souls. So it was something where Again, uh, the way the original Dark Souls uh, experience would have been yep. is you lay out uh, a series of tiles, uh, and then right at the start of the game, you have five tiles that you lay out. You start off on the first one, um, you finish that, you either choose to go back to the bonfire, or you can keep on going, and yep. fighting your way through. Um, if you return to the bonfire, everything resets, and then you start from square one, and you have to go all the way back through again could be quite grindy could be something where again you found yourself returning to those same fights over and over and no matter how much you're leveled up and you can blast through them ultimately you are still zipping through stuff that you know is, is still a combat encounter to have to yeah. overcome shortcuts is a nice thing where it enables us to sidestep some of that stuff so if there is an early level encounter you can simply ignore that by going straight to the point where you were yeah, lost that or the last thing you found and that's actually one of the things where thematically that was one of the immediate quite surprised bit of feedback that i yeah quite surprising piece of feedback but we had a few of our people say well actually it is very dark souls to fight your way yeah. through an area and then literally just flip a latch on a door and now you can just go yeah. straight back to where this next bonfire is so that is a nice melding of the pair that also lets us unlock a gameplay change at the same time being thematically appropriate yeah and then how do you balance around that versus the the souls you'd gather throughout that process Meaning, because the perfect player chooses, you're now giving the player a player choice, player agency between effectively right. grind or souls. So, like, how do you balance around that? Well, part of that is factored into the new uh, encounter design. 
Okay. And that's really the big dramatic shift that you would experience playing this that you wouldn't necessarily have in the uh, in the older versions of the game. So one of the things that Matt, our creative director, and I sort of sat down and started discussing initially is we're always basically we're always really big fans of the combat puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, this idea that combat should be something where it's not simply kill all the bad guys and then run onto the next room. There is something where there are other objectives. It's thinking about. You know, do we want to go over here and pull a lever that raises the portcullis so we can dash underneath it? Are we trying to survive an onslaught of enemies? Are we trying to, you know, I don't know, protect a certain area or something along those lines? There's lots mm -hmm. and lots of variation, variety that we can put into these things. And that's exactly what the new encounter system is. It's all built around adding thematic elements so that way it feels more like you're in particular areas that players will find resonant with their experience. So, oh, hey, I remember this part of the game. Like, that, that's the bit where I don't know I crashed into this chamber and there are a whole bunch of barrels there or whatever else that I had to creep through. Or this is the bit where an enemy came, a very specific enemy came to get me, that sort of stuff. Um, but also have a bit of creative license. We were able to explore new ideas that felt very Dark Souls and mixed up the experience quite a lot. So that way it keeps players on their toes. It keeps players guessing. And then obviously built into part of that is the idea of you know of rewards where we can set specific trials so you have bonus objectives of trying to do certain things in a certain time limit we can do things where we can much better focus the amount of souls you're getting and some of those encounters don't actually offer you that many souls if they're a low level encounter so for players you know especially having a shortcut isn't actually that much of a detriment to missing it, missing it and skipping it over yeah, sure. that makes sense so you mentioned uh, you mentioned the dark souls you mentioned one other thing you mentioned the shortcuts and there's one other thing you mentioned along with shortcuts. I'm trying to remember what it was. As far as a design decision, the difference in the core sets. Oh. I mean, there's a few different rule bits and pieces that we can dive into. I mean, sure. this is the point where we rewind the video and have it. No, 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 no. Go, go for it. What was, what's the different rule set? I'll, I'll try to remember what that was while you dive into oh, it. I'm going to bring up, I mean, just off the top of my head. Uh, most of it, I mean, there's a few different changes to terrain, uh, changes to how terrain works, but most sure. of that supports obviously the encounters themselves. Uh, we wanted to make um you know that for example a change to gravestones and how they work is something where they're um they're really there to better enable you because you don't necessarily set up the boss decks at the start of the game now uh so yeah. there's something where we need to switch those around to like, give you more capacity to look at other types of decks as well as any obvious example um when you go to buy items uh when you're back at the uh when you go back to the bonfire you now have a selection of different items that you can get rather than just having a one pour or whatever else that was another common house rule that people had where i draw you know x amount of cards and we can choose which one we want to get rather than you draw a card and then choose whether to buy or not um small changes like that another one which was quite interesting and again factored in quite nicely is that we gave people the opportunity that when they found a new piece of equipment, they can actually equip that straight away instead of having to put it in the inventory and then go back to the bonfire oh. and thus use their sparks to have to go do that. Interesting. So that's actually one thing. I remember the first time I was going through the Painted World and I was reading through the whole rule set aspect of the bonfire and figuring this out. Mm. And my first level of irritation was like, do I have to like go to the bonfire to equip my equipment? And I like looked through, I was like, nope, nope, I can do that. I'm fine. Yeah. Like I'll level up later. That's fine. I'll wait till the leveling up. But like I was irritated when I first got that first piece of cool equipment and I thought I'd have to go back to the bonfire. And I remember reading right. that and being like, good, they didn't make me do that much. But it's interesting to know that yeah. that was different. Yeah. So in the first version, that was a big thing you had to do. So, mm. and also on that, is let feed into something else is we were able to streamline what the rules were and i say this with absolute uh honest and trans honesty and transparency i think when i first sat down to look at the rule book i felt like and i think it's not an unfair statement i could tell this is one of the first like board game rule books that we as a company wrote if i'm to be quite honest looking at it and i don't mean that with any sense of detriment to any of the guys who worked on it yeah. for obvious reasons this is yeah from six years ago or it's whatever, a process yeah. watch my first video yeah. and watch my video now like a whole different right. conversation exactly it like just just in the way that my mind worked and looked at it and obviously you know six years of writing rules and, and discussing various different bits and pieces and honing our craft meant that we could look at this and go hmm, this is a slight gray area or this language could be tightened up here or streamlined here to make it easier for players to understand what's going on in that respect that's one of the big changes in the rule book is really when I say streamlining, people start to think you've stripped things out. It's more so much just making simple, more decorative statements that are clearer and easier to understand and easier to follow intent. Yeah, having read a lot of rule books, I can tell you I struggled 0% with uh, the Dark Souls, with with these particular. I haven't read the original, but these were, were clear. They're, they're obviously lengthy to account for all the oh. things from the progression, the bonfire, the sequences, the, the boss scenarios, but also it was also well-structured in a way that it was not just generally clear, but it was well-structured such that you can kind of choose the parts that are relevant to where you're up to in the journey and say, 
I'll get to this rest later. I'll read the boss fight later. I'll read the bonfire later. Like I, I kind of read their core parts, flipped through what else I need to get to, and then dealt with those as I went. So I didn't have to hold all that information in my head all at once. Uh, it's a very easy experience to dive into. But yeah. Yeah. Rule, rule books are a thing that is en are endlessly fascinating to me. I spend an awful lot of time looking at those and. I'm a very big fan of of almost breaking them down into components in the sense that exactly as you've said, read yeah. this far. Once you've read this far, you can go and play the game. You don't have to store that information in because if I just give you information overload, the whole thing seems unwieldy and you can't necessarily know what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Read this far. Once you've got to this boss fight, now read this section here. You didn't need these rules before, especially because Dark Souls in particular has quite a involved boss fight mechanic to go with it and yeah. i definitely don't want players to be laden down with that from the road no it's well structured it's very similar to i recall this actually probably very similar to my encounter reading through bard song similar similar breaking up similar structure yeah. similar sequencing uh speaking of similarities actually while we're here uh this dark soul so i played monster hunter world from steam forge games already yeah. and i remember a comment i got at the time that made no sense to me just because not doing no sense but that didn't mm -hmm. resonate with me because i hadn't played dark souls is there was a comment about how oh this feels like these are the the boss fights from dark souls and a po it was said positively meaning many people are saying oh this is the best part of the dark souls experience my favorite part of the dark Souls experience in monster hunter world and while there obviously are many differences which we can get into as well but i don't think that's necessary for this but i i do understand now that core structure aspect in terms of similarities i mean like, there's a degree of similarity of of the boss fight in dark souls is entirely different than the to general you know encounters one at a time uh the minions where they're very predictable they're very procedural sometimes you have to kind of get through them it's a numbers game versus the dark souls are about learning the patterns about dancing dodging trying to figure out how much time you want to spend evading so you can figure out the sequence and how much time you want to spend rushing up to hopefully deal enough damage that's worth whatever they deal back to you uh that dance and tug of war back and forth felt much more reminiscent of monster hunter world again with lots of differences as well but the core structure being similar but i'm actually not actually as interested in monster hunter world and i'm more curious is because i've played a lot of steam force games and i would say I think those are the only two that really felt strongly similar. If I think through Resident Evil, through Horizon Zero Dawn, through whatever else, I think that they've all felt through Bardsung. I feel the gameplay style has all felt very different in all those. But in terms of Elden Ring, what design similarities, if any, and the answer might be none, make their way from Dark Souls into Elden Ring? Because they're not compatible, right? They're two different systems. They're entirely different games. Yeah. I, I like the subtle sidestep, by the way. Of, uh, let's talk about Dark Souls to Monster Hunter. Oh, by the way, there's Elden Ring thing, right? What are you? I mean, it's work. No, Monster Hunter World is business. more popular. Let's let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Elden Ring, it's uh, the combat system. In fact, all of the system for Elden Ring is is actually quite a departure from Dark Souls in sense of how it works. Obviously, you still have some similarities. You can still increase your stats. Uh, you can still have bits of equipment and armor and so on. Um, However, in terms of how combat is resolved, I'd actually say there's more of a there's more of a hint of Bardsung in some of how the uh, in some of how Elden Ring's combat system works than there is necessarily in Dark Souls. Obviously, the focus is still on boss fights, um, sure. but uh, and when you do get into combat, we do obviously have combats with smaller enemies. But exactly as you've said, there's you know quite elegantly described it as a numbers game. You're looking to mitigate how much damage you take against smaller enemies and so on. You're really sort of looking at those as a way of building resources and experience and other such things. Um the real focus, you know, when you actually get into what the actual combat aspect is, let's let's say the exploration is is wildly different in Elden Ring. The combat system I think is best described as an interesting melding of Monster Hunter World, Bard Sung, some small parts of resident evil there's a few different bits and pieces going in there but it's a very distinct it's very distinct unique and very much its own very much its own entity is the best way to describe it which is why i hesitate to really name drop any of those games because although there are elements this is something where we're very excited it's a real if we're to look at our core systems and we can talk about you know resident evil for example as our survival horror engine we can talk about dark souls as you know the uh there's the dark souls engine we can talk about monster hunter which uses a very similar engine to well it's it's it's, it's distinct engine which has taken bits and pieces from, from a few different sources horizon zero dawn again is a card builder kind of really build Elden ring is another core engine for us so it's something where I, I hesitate to really well, I'm compare it. Genuinely, I'm less actually interested in what Elden Ring is. That's not true. It's a lie. I'm very interested <laughs> in what Elden Ring. I'm very interested in what Elden Ring is. But in the context of this discussion, I was interested more in how it compares to Dark Souls and what the overlap. Because one of the things that's an inherent comparison is like we're talking about uh, both a, a Souls game, which brings its own comparison, yeah, and fair. then we're also talking about you know Steam Forge Games' first gigantic Kickstarter thing that made you guys famous oh. to a degree, and then combined with Elden Ring, there's a lot of like comparisons are just okay elden ring dark souls elden ring dark souls 
I was curious genuinely about the comparison from those. So the fact that they're different already has me very intrigued in just what now now we'll have another conversation another time about what Elden Ring is. But that's that's coming up soon enough anyway. Uh, so that's uh, fine. So that's the Elden Ring comparison. So I would say for Dark Souls, going back to Dark Souls, what hmm. ha, if you own the Dark Souls? Uh, you know, if you own Painted World or Tome of Giants, if those we just jumped into, and you want to expand from there, is it worth trying to hunt down expansions for like how compatible is it to be able to integrate with pre previous content? I mean, from a, so if you wanted to put in, uh, if you were able to get, you know, one of the Mega Boss expansions, you could mm -hmm. happily substitute those in, uh, and instead of, you know, for example, Grave Lord Nito or or Crossbreed Priscilla, you can simply fight the Gaping Dragon or the Four Kings at the end of your campaign. Very yeah. very straightforward to port in. If you're looking at an expansion that includes player characters, they very much can go straight over again. So you can use, you know, the Knight or the Herald or any of the other characters from the old core set in this as a new player character to go through. You can mix in treasure cards uh, into this, which won't have any, you know, any detrimental effects at all. Uh, they'll all happily gotcha. fit into what your experience is. Um, yeah, like it, all of it is experience. All of it you can experience as part of what that is. Um, if you have something where you have grunts into the low level enemies and you wanted to explore, you know, the core game um, encounters, for example, that you would have to use using the old campaign system because obviously these campaigns as you see here and I'm, i know you've played them through the yep. encounters are tuned around the enemies that are in these boxes but that's obviously something that we'll be looking at going forward and addressing anyway we will be making uh cards available for the core sets uh especially so that way people who've got that can play the new campaign system using that which is a great follow-up my next question was what's the, what are the continued plans for the dark souls line so these aren't the last of our core sets uh, I will say with sort of you know an enigmatic sort of dot 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 after that yeah exactly so there will be enigmatic more coming. Is fine. yeah enigmatic I think works um, so there'll certainly be more stuff there um, this is very much something where the way that we see our releases for Dark Souls going forward will be core sets they will be something where they're standalone so if you're a retailer they're very friendly for you to just pick up you don't have to have an expansion sitting on your shelf which is you know something that yeah. you know someone else has to have a core that they need to buy it's also again as I said it's a great way to get new people to sort of you know really experience what the game is um, so that's a really good starting point um, in terms of existing players who obviously have some of the some sub content they're looking to experience they can obviously use the new rules with their old products but they can also will make available new campaign cards for their existing content we have so mega bosses as i already said and enemy and characters can happily fit in something like the core set that's our first portal call so we have some new encounter cards coming out for those guys which we'll probably make and yeah this is something where i believe yeah i think i'm correct on this which is that they'll be available as a free download for people um tbd in terms of a uh, printed a uh, uh, printed version of that I'm not 100% sure on the logistics of how we're going to do that. I know we've discussed that a few times. Gotcha. So that's something which is still a touch up in the air at the moment. And I only say that because I don't want to be committal. Um, that's that, fair. Oh, sure. Play it safe. Play it safe. And yeah, play it safe. But they are certainly something where we know they're coming. In fact, having seen them, yes, they exist. So that's fine. It's just more a case of play testing them, make sure they're balanced because we do that for quite a long while to make sure that these are fun experiences, they're engaging, that actually players won't be disappointed when they arrive because obviously that's a big thing. So... That's a, that's the element that we're putting into this, but yeah, we are absolutely engaged, we're absolutely committed to supporting Dark Souls going forward um, in a way where we can also make sure that people who've got existing stuff still can carry on playing their games and enjoying them. And obviously, there's new content coming out for people to enjoy as well. Excellent. I think that covers everything I have on my end. So I guess it goes to the last question, which is anything anyone should know. Anything anything you want people to know to go to, like where to pick these up, anything or the Elden Ring show, whatever, whatever. It's your it's your court now. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know when this video is going out. If, if Dark Souls, you know, if these aren't available now to buy this because they're on pre-order. So you mm -hmm. can go check them out on our site and go pick them up there. If not, go chat to your, go chat to your friendly local retailer. I'm sure they'll be happy to uh, sell you a box of these. Um, but otherwise, no. Um, please do check out Elden Ring as the Kickstarter when that comes out because we're insanely excited about that. It's been a real bunch of fun to work on. And uh, I Excellent. think... Yeah, that's, that's, I, I don't want to be over salesy, but I, I'm just I'm just a designer who's really excited about that engine. I just really want to make professor everybody, please do check it out because it's amazing. So uh, it's been all sorts of fun to work with From Software and have some fun in this very unique and engaging world they've created. Very um, cool, and I and I think people will enjoy it.
Excellent. Well, Sharon, thank you for your time. I'll have a link down below to everyone to uh, both uh, Steamforge Games as well as Elden Ring if you want to check those out. Uh, these are the new Dark Souls Painted World of Ariamis as well as the Tomb of Giants uh, for the Dark Souls universe with apparently more core sets eventually potentially coming out and stuff like that. Uh, Sharon, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for everyone for watching. And as always, I hope you have a good one.